Now, I think I have a microphone on. Well, I do have a microphone on me. I think it's working, but I don't know for sure, but I guess we'll find out, <laughs> okay? And now I wanna talk about spinning and be a little honest with you about my spinning. Um, I have spun up all of the red bats that I had and the end of it is here on this bobbin, which I'm about to take off my wheel. And the reason for that is because the lady that I buy them from doesn't have any more right now. She thought she was gonna be able to make some more, um, but she's not able to. She has to dye the wool first. So I am, instead of, and I don't know how long that'll be. She said she might get to her dye studio. She's been building a new dye studio. She might get to it this weekend, but I don't really wanna wait to be spinning. So this is gonna wait on some more. You can see it's not full. I'm gonna fill the bobbin and um, then I wanna do another bobbin of this to ply with it. And then I'll have some, I'll have yarn that's that color. Isn't that just beautiful? I don't know if there's something about, it's red, but it has so many different colors in there. There's blues and deep purples and lots of orange and even a little orangey yellow. Um, so these are the two that I did before the two hanks with these bats where I also blended in some other things, as you recall. Um, there's even a little metallic in there. There's even a little green. I don't like this as well. It's not as red, but I'm hoping that I can make something with these two and then have two more that look more like this and uh, figure out a way to make it work. If I make a shawl or something, I'm really thinking toward the fall, what I want to knit toward the fall. So, um, then I also have this, and this requires even more honesty, okay? This is my brown. I started a single so that I could spin up some more yarn to keep knitting that brown sweater, and I will be doing that, but I realized I was having a hard time, um, hard time carding it, um, hand carding it, because when I washed it, I think I used uh, water that was too hot, and I think I felted it a little bit. And so it's really hard to separate the fibers and it's just frustrating. And so I stopped, which is what we do <laughs> with our crafting, isn't it? We get frustrated and we stop. So um, this is still going to happen on hold. I don't know. So for now, look at all, see my bookcase over here. It's all full of the fiber that I have dyed. And a lot of it I have prepared for spinning. Not all of it. Like this is, this has been prepared for spinning. I don't even know what some of this is. I have labeled it. This is not prepared yet, as you can see. I didn't put anything on that. I told myself I labeled it, but I didn't. That looks like dandelion, maybe. That was one of the, oh, there's the, there's the label. Shetland dandelion. So there you go. Well, that was lucky. But I also have lots of wonderful lichen colored down here. And remember this kind of vaguely green. Oh dear, what was that? Looks like I've lost a tag on that too. I should have written it. I should, instead of using the tape, I should have written it on the bag. Anyway, it has kind of a greeny gray look. I'm sure I could go back to my videos and remember what it was. I think I'm going to spin some of this. Look at it, get it out, look at it, and see do I want to blend it together? Do I want to you know, do it in sections, which is most likely? Do I just want to do a solid, um, all kind of orangey lichen? I do think that, that singles look most beautiful when they have a primary color that you're going for, but lots of complexity in there that complements it, just like that. And the lady that does this at the Wayward, Wayward Fiber Studio, her name is Pam. Um, she just has an eye. She just has an eye for making beautiful bats. And it's so nice to just spin straight from the bat and not have to worry about all that. So right now, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to figure out what I'm going to spin up next. And I've got three empty bobbins. So I should be able to fill one of them with something while I'm waiting for more of this. I'm going to fill this bobbin. 
and then I want to fill this bobbin with the red and then I'll have a third bobbin to ply them onto which means I can spin for fun on this one that's right okay that's the plan let's get spinning I think I've chosen the um the fleece that I want to work with now that I want to spin a little bit with I'm choosing mostly the lichens which are kind of orangey yellow and the onions and daffodils which are more yellow and then also I don't remember what that last thing was I did that turned out kind of green I think it was was it dock maybe it was dock I can't remember I didn't label it which is ridiculous um, I don't know what kind it is feels like it might be that Romney that I bought from Pam um, a little scratch here um, but it is kind of green and, and I'll show you um, what I end up with if I do this I'm going to segment it I block it you know where I do long sections of each color before I transition to another word I don't want to blend it on the bobbin I want to um, have it in segments and then when I apply it I'll get nice flashes of color now inside the studio with very imperfect lighting I'll show you the five that I've done so far uh, this is some Jacob dyed with dandelion and notice how it just well it's a little more yellow in real life but it's very pale here's the somewhat greenish one that I think might be dock this one's also unlabeled but I'm pretty sure that that is a red onion it looks red or brownier on the camera than it does uh, in the studio this is lichen and it's some of it is really bright that's the brightest orangiest lichen i've ever gotten i think it was fresh lichen and then this is some yellow onion i think it's a yes this is the first dye uh, from some yellow onion so it has a lovely mm, orangey yellow color i've taken you outside to show you the colors on the bobbin so here is that first color, dandelion. Um, here is the green that I think might be dock. And then here is the red onion. I think it's red onion. Here is that fresh um, lichen. And then here is the yellow onion. And you can see in there, when I dyed it, it I didn't get a very um, uniform dye. But I love all the variations. That's what I, I don't need consistency in my dyeing. I, I don't want that at all. So there's the colors so far on the bobbin. I have some more onions I'm gonna add on to there and some lichen, but that's basically what I'm gonna end up with. And I really, I really like it. And I think I can get just about an endless amount of yarn to work with. I decided to attack my nemesis today with the help of the loan of a reciprocating saw from a friend. The score so far is Hot Tub 1 MK0. 
I did get all these little wooden supports cut around. Tried to get some of this foam stuff out. This is super hard. That is easier, but of course I can't get to much of it because it's underneath. I'm not strong enough to shove it over. Not real sure what we're gonna do. I hate to wait until my son comes to do this. I'd rather get it done before then. Hello. Well, this is the spot where we had a dead hot tub. It never was a living hot tub while we had it. Um, and so I was desperate to get rid of this ugly monstrosity in the yard. Uh, there'll be some video and photos in here uh, to show you what it looked like as I was deconstructing it. I don't think I have a photo of it when it was just sitting there because it was so ugly I always avoided showing it on film. <laughs> so, but now I have this big open space and I have to figure out what to do with it. I'd love to have a little building there, maybe a little potting shed, maybe an awning coming off the house in the seating area, maybe a table and chairs, maybe a little shade garden because this is a pretty shady spot. So I don't really know yet what I want to do, but this this is where the hot tub was and now it's not there anymore yes now i did all of the work of organizing borrowing the saw and i took it all away to the dump but uh the person who actually cut up the fiberglass part of the of uh, the main body of the hot tub was my husband because i was not strong enough to do that but i did remove and get rid of all the other stuff the lid the styrofoam uh the sheathing around the outside. So I did a lot of that work, so I'm pretty proud of myself. Well, now we have an improved outdoors, and that's a relief. This morning I wanted a calming, kind of uh, mindless activity to do in my studio first thing, so I am sorting through more of these scraps. Here is the bag of scraps. This was a big bag, and I'm about halfway through. Um, I've decided to start putting them in this tub, which I rescued from the potting shed. It was filthy, so I scrubbed it out. Always looking for new storage. Anyway, these are the, this is the batik stack. These are just kind of ordinary width, wider ones here. Other patterns that are wide, and then this is a normal width of some regular patterns. I do prefer the batik, so I keep them separate. Here's a stack of more scrap pieces that are not long like these, but are significant size. And then these are the trash ones that are not wide enough to do anything with. All right, enough of those scraps. I think I'm done with that, and now my brain is able to do something more active. Um, we'll load these into this tub. I'll have to finish this bag another time, but it's much smaller than it was. All right, now let me see here. This is a large tub, so I'll just combine all of these in here. It's amazing how if I store them rolled up like this, when I get them out, the wrinkles will be out of there. I've even kept some really thin ones that I just love the color of that. Look at that. I really do love these. Here's some more thin ones. Again, another batik. They're about an inch and a half, and I know that that's what uh, Kate Jackson on her channel, she cuts things about an inch and a half to do her postage stamp quilting. So I think, well, maybe, maybe, maybe I'll use that for that. All right, here's a really big stack. I love this red. Isn't that beautiful? Mm. So, um, and there's a lot of variations of greens and blues. The lady who met, who gives me these scraps, as I told you, she makes napkins. And um, because we live in a coastal community, she makes a lot of nautical themed napkins that sell very well. So um, I get a lot of blue and green fabric from her. Color of the ocean. And once I have them stored like this, 
it's just, I'm just so much more likely to um, to use them for something because they are not going to be all wrinkly. They'll be easy to, to sew. And I've sorted them into generally into sizes. Now I've got a box of really wide ones that I'm going to go put this in. That's probably, some of those are four inches and I could use them. Actually, I could use those. Let's see if that is four inches. Oh, almost. Huh. I could almost use that for some bunting, but um, we'll see. And here at the end, I just want to catch you up on a couple of little projects that I left unfinished before. First of all is the bunting. Uh, in addition to the blue bunting, I did go ahead and put all of that red together on a pink ribbon. And I think it turned out fine, and somebody will probably like that. And then uh, with the floral and the flip-flops, <laughs> I decided because they were so colorful, I just put them together. And I like how that turned out also. So they'll go to the farmer's market tomorrow. And we'll see if anybody wants them. The other thing I decided to do with those two squares of patchy scraps that I put together, um, I, I ended up filling them, uh, the smaller one out and making them the same size, put them together, and I uh, made another little um, pouch like I have before, uh, and I'll put a link up here to that um, from Kate Jackson's channel. That has been a super fun project. I'll probably keep on making those. It's a great way to use your scraps, and uh, they're very useful. All right, I think that's it for this week. I hope you enjoyed the spinning and the hot tub demolition. Isn't that great? <laughs> See you next time. Bye-bye.